that when they speak, they just have to use their hands. They literally cannot utter a word without their hands going along with it. I am not one of those people. I plant my hands and I have to literally think about the words that are coming out of my mouth so that they make sense to you. I cannot combine hand actions with it. But the other morning I had this Bible study. I've been going through the book of Exodus and I was in chapter 17 and talking, the scripture was talking about how Moses and the Israelites came to their first battle. And Moses went up on a hill and he raised his hands up. And as long as his hands were up in the sky, the Israelites were winning the battle. But as soon as his hands would get tired and fall down, they would begin to lose. So Aaron and a gentleman by the name of Hun came alongside and held his hands up and they won the battle, they were victorious. In fact, at the end of the chapter, Moses praises the Lord and says, your banner over me is victory. Well, I was doing a little research, reading some commentaries, and um, one commentator shared how this posture that Moses had is actually a prayer posture um, used by the Hebrews. And Moses was in fact praying that the Lord would win the battle. And it got me to thinking, you know, sometimes prayer is easy. You can stand there and say, thank you, Lord, for this, or, oh, Lord, help me with this. But then sometimes prayer is a battle. You literally have to raise your hands to the Lord and pray. Well, yesterday I had that great Bible study. Oh, look, my hands are moving with my mouth. This is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We had um, a great Bible study. We started off our day great. I was exercising, I ate healthy, the kids jumped into school. It was all going really well. We're halfway through our history lesson and then I hear like a blower outside in our front yard and I go, oh my goodness, our neighbors are blowing up all of our leaves. They completely fell off the tree the night before. And I said, boys, quick, get your shoes and coats. Come on, we have to go help them. We cannot let them do our front yard for us. So we spent the next half hour working next side by side with our neighbors, cleaning up all the leaves from their yard and the people right next to us and um, into bins. And it was just a great experience. Um, in the conversations that I've had with these people, I can tell that they do not know Jesus and they need to know his love. And the boys and I, we just want to shine brightly to these people and share Jesus' love with them. So we wrapped that all up, we come back to our history lesson, and it goes down from there. I have one um, buddy that just, he doesn't wanna work. He doesn't wanna write things in. He's getting irritated at his brothers. Every little thing is causing to him to explode. I start gently trying to get him to do his work, but it escalates, and to be quite honest, it gets quite ugly. Um, he's arguing, I'm yelling, and it ends with, um, me slamming his bedroom door and saying, you can stay in there till your dad comes home. I'm not doing this. And he screams from the other side, I'm breaking out of this place. <laughs> and so I stood there and I waited. And sure enough, he opened his bedroom window, popped his screen out and climbed out the window. And I had to stop and go, Lord, what is going on here? Like this day was going really good. What happened? Well, thankfully, he climbed back in his window and he came out and he apologized. And he got to that place of brokenness and realizing that he was being disrespectful and having a bad attitude. I had to apologize for my ugliness and we had to move on and finish our day. It wasn't perfect. There were arguments over little things. There was misunderstandings over big things. But I stopped and I realized this isn't about a history question or a math question. This is about the fact that I stepped outside my door, I ministered to my neighbors, I did life with them, and we did it well. The enemy does not want me to be victorious, so he slipped back in that door with me and he got under my skin and he started to disrupt the peace in my home. So I stopped and I said, boys, this is a spiritual battle we've got going on right now and we need to pray. And I stopped right there in the middle of our lesson and I began to pray. 
I prayed over the boys, I prayed over the peace in our home, and I prayed over myself. And as I did, I could not help it, but my hands raised to heaven and to the Lord, and I shouted out my battle cry. We went on with our day. And like I said, there were little things here and there, but I had stopped and recognized that it was a spiritual battle that was going on, and I needed to raise my hands in prayer, recognize it for what it was, and claim the victory because God is our banner. He is our banner of victory. And I really felt like um, instead of smuggling up with my thesaurus and my cup of coffee and typing this out in a blog, that I needed to physically show you how to raise your hands and cry out the battle prayer. Because I believe that there are people out there that are fighting a spiritual battle. I believe that you might be fighting a spiritual battle, whether it's in your marriage, Maybe it's at home with your kids. Maybe it's with your boss at work. Maybe it's just with the guy next to you on the freeway that won't let you over. But we need to stop seeing the physical and start looking at the spiritual and realize that the enemy is trying to rip us off. The Lord is your banner of victory. Raise your hands. Pray and be victorious.